It clicked after about 5 seconds, what I just did to him. But I loved watching his life burn down around him. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. In this episode, business employees choose nuclear revenge to change their bad working environment that bad co-workers created. We start off with a nurse who gets threatened with false accusations, but finds a clever way to uno reverse her aggressive co-worker. Followed by a bad workplace environment where food gets eaten by stealing co-workers, but the office refrigerator contains a lunchbox with a warning about rat poison. Lastly, a lazy co-worker doesn't pull his weight and takes advantage of his ties to the owners, but then he receives a revenge act that results in an overkill. Target the like button with your vindictiveness and behold how many people are just like us. Let's dive in. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. To start off, I want to clarify that I went way overboard and at the time this story took place, I was at a bad spot in my life, but I do not regret what I did anyway. I'm not proud of this. About four years ago, I was working as a certified nurse's aide. I later lost my job for unrelated reasons and never went back into the field for other reasons. While I was there, I was one of four who would train the new people. This is only relevant as the person this involves, who will be called John, was one of the guys I trained at our facility. John, for the most part, was easy to get along with, but had a temper, and everyone was aware of it. What I didn't know at the time was that he was also fighting for custody of his child. One day, about a year into him working there, he had messed up some charting. No big deal, I fixed it and corrected him on his mistake. He at first was confused, but I just explained that he might have gotten the charting numbers mixed up and it was no problem. Now for reference, we did our charting paper style at the desk located between two of the halls, and occasionally our patients would be sitting in front of it while chatting with us. As most of them were dementia care, they never really remembered what would be said, but regardless, we never talked about anyone by name, only room number or chart number. About an hour after this, I was finishing showering and cleaning up a resident and he came in the shower room and asked to talk to me. Sure, that's fine as it was a private area. He made mention that he didn't appreciate me correcting him in front of people. It made sense so I apologized and told him it wouldn't happen again. I don't know where I went wrong, but he started getting loud about how it was his hall and no one had the right to talk to him like that. Now I'm pissed. I told him that we don't have hall leads at our facility, nor does any nursing home I have seen, excluding maybe our nurses, who are in charge. And second, I have been here many years longer than him, and apparently nothing I said while training him stuck. This didn't sit well with him. He proceeded to pin me to the wall of the shower room with his arm across my throat, and hand holding my shirt. As he held me there, he told me if I ever talked to him like that again, he was reporting me to state for HIPAA violations. Now HIPAA is not something I take lightly. One slip up could cost you everything in this field with a HIPAA violation. I was red with anger. My thing is, I'm double this guy's size and didn't want to lose my job for fighting with a coworker. The place was terrible, but I enjoyed helping the residents. So I started thinking and immediately had an idea. If there was one thing I knew, it was that the only thing worse for your license than a HIPAA violation, was elder abuse. So I started my scheme. We had a man on our hall who had brain damage from football, and as such was highly combative and took two people to normally handle him. I was able to do him on my own generally, as I talked to him about football while taking care of him. I played defensive line in high school. One specific day, he had developed a bruise on his chest, and I had no clue where it came from, but I had an idea about what I was going to say it came from. I immediately called in John to help me transfer this resident to bed. As we got done and went into the hall, saying it just loud enough for several CNAs and nurses to hear, I stated, I don't care why you did it, you never hit a patient. He was taken aback by this whole statement. It clicked after about 5 seconds, what I just did to him. The nurses had me write a statement, in which I mentioned I had asked if he knew where that new bruise came from. 
I said that John told me that while he was walking the resident to the bathroom, he kept squeezing his arm so he hit him in the chest. Yes, the guy would squeeze arms and wrists when being walked. So this was believable. The next day I came in and found out that John lost his job and police and adult protective services were pressing charges on him. I don't know if he was found guilty or not. I did find out a few weeks later however, that he not only lost his license, he also lost complete custody of his child to his ex-wife and got no visitation. On top of that, he had to sell everything he owned in order to pay for his lawyer. Needless to say, I could have been a little more fair to him, but I loved watching his life burn down around him. Let it be learned, don't grab or threaten people who can ruin your life with the drop of a hat. Before I start to tell my story, I have to say I didn't do this myself, I didn't know who did it either, but it happened where I worked. Post year 2008 crisis situation, third world country, the IT sector was very affected after the crisis. I got a job as a developer in a place with horrible rules, treatment of staff and a bad maintained workplace in general. For example, they allowed smoking inside the offices, without ventilation for fresh air but I had to pay the bills. The pay was so bad, that it was normal for many people to do small thefts, like papers, pens, paper notebooks etc. But one thing they specifically warned me about when I started working there, was that I should never leave anything to eat in the fridge, because someone else was going to eat it. Some workers tried to retaliate, so there were a couple of booby traps like soft drinks with laxatives or similar. But as I found out later, Someone left a lunchbox with food saying that the food was poisoned with rat poison. Someone actually took that lunchbox and decided to eat the food. It turns out that it wasn't meant to scare the thieving coworker away, but it actually contained rat poison. The thieving coworker was a woman. She almost died from internal bleeding and ended up with serious long-term damages in her digestive system. Her kidneys were destroyed and she had a compromised liver. How did I find out? When the police came and questioned us all in a brutal way. I was cleared, but it was not pleasant. And they never, as far as I know, found the culprit amongst us in the office. A month or two later I found a better job, it didn't pay more, but it was better. I work at a fast food restaurant. I love the place. Been here for two years. I had a coworker named Tommy, he is family of the owner and when applied, he got hired straight away. Every time he's on shift, he works way too slow. He causes extra work for everyone involved and doesn't seem to care. We often add two to three more hours of prep that should have been done during his shift. He also bosses us around like he's the general manager, but he's a base level employee. Tommy always took advantage of his situation and manipulated the female workers to do his work. I'm done. Pissed off. And decided it was time for revenge. I know everyone in the restaurant hates him, except for the owners. The owner is conveniently ignorant of Tommy's actions. I decided to create a fake Google account. First name, Frick and last name, Tommy. Address is of the restaurant itself. I also used a voice program of Google and began to transfer text to speech writing. I proceeded to text my coworkers in text, I have a plan to get rid of Tommy, you in? Then I would ask them if they thought Tommy is the worst employee here. When replied with yes, I would ask, why? I typed up all the responses and print hundreds of copies of each. Each packet is two pages. Bathrooms don't have cameras for legal reasons. So every day multiple times a day, I place a stapled copy in a bathroom stall. Each bathroom stall gets used about once an hour. Could be anyone placing these. The customers themselves read and bring the document to the manager, it was entertaining stuff. Oh boy, the owner's pissed. A firestorm has been created and he knows it won't stop. He calls everyone in to discuss this matter. Conveniently, I am a great liar and he has no idea it's me. We start getting negative reviews telling us to fire Tommy. Literally nothing is more influential to an owner than negative reviews. Tommy gets fired. Absolutely no one in the area will hire this kid. 
They all know his name. He doesn't have money to move. He goes broke and now lives in a shelter. Serves you right Oompa Loompa. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation. Did you find the secret in this episode? Let us know in the comments and add the timestamp. If you're the first to be correct, you'll be pinned on top.